everyone and welcome back to this week's new video if you don't know who i am my name is noah and i mostly make lifestyle type videos on this channel so please feel free to subscribe down below and keep watching this video okay so it's actually already november um only a couple days in like first week um, I know it's a little late than I usually do it, but here is my October favorites. I need to stop touching my hair. I don't really know what to do with it. My monthly favorites, like my favorites for this month, mostly consists of books, which is like okay because if you know anything about me and like what you've seen on this channel, I love to read. So I actually had to return them to the library because they were due, but. I got clips in advance and I'm ready to talk about them. So my number one book is most definitely Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. There's just so much of um, to like about her writing that I decided to look up all her other books and borrow them as well. So I have that um, in my little library book stash over there. But Me Before You was also made into a very popular movie with Sam Claflin and Amelia Clark. It is a love story. It's very unconventional. That's like right off the bat, you kind of know it's a love story. Will Trainer had a traffic accident and he ended up as a quadriplegic. So it means that he is refined to a wheelchair. He has he can't move his legs whatsoever. He has very limited um, like ability or little to none ability really to move his hands. He um, kind of just like can move his fingers around and type and things like that. He can still talk and stuff, but it's kind of difficult for him to do anything on his own. So he has to be fed. He has to be bathed. All the things. Louisa Clark ends up being his caretaker and it's kind of just their journey and like learning about like testing your boundaries and just really going out to explore the world and getting out of your comfort zone and this book just makes me laugh in so many ways it's just such like a natural chuckle on the train to myself it's also very sad i don't really cry when i read books even if it is really sad i kind of just save the tears for the movie but this book i genuinely was standing up holding on the subway pole just trying to fight back tears because i straight up was just so sad reading this book and I actually just finished the sequel to it, After You, um, yesterday. It's just so beautifully written and it's so great. I didn't watch the movie before having read the book, but it was really great knowing that it was Amelia Clark and Sam Claflin because I could perfectly imagine their characters. Because I know, I feel like Sam Claflin is kind of just this huge character. Um, he has this, not a huge ego, but he's kind of like very sure of himself and very like strong person and really sarcastic. I feel like he's played those kind of characters um, in movies. And then Amelia Clark is this cute little bubbly, like strange little person. I could totally imagine her being that. So it pre created this perfect like imagery in my head that it was them too. And I just loved how the book was written. So my second book is called happiness by heather harfam it's not actually called happiness it's called like a happiness the crooked little road to semi ever after or something like that and it's actually a memoir so it's based on heather harfam the author's life and she had a daughter um her firstborn named gracie amelia grace she's totally cute little girl and it's kind of about her life and she becomes pregnant and when she gives birth she realizes that she has um I believe a blood disease and from a small age she um, is hospitalized for like weeks upon her birth I think. She just gets getting sicker and sicker and there doesn't seem to be like an immediate cure unless she gets a transplant so it's kind of like a mother's struggle at the same time she's kind of balancing being a single mom while kind of letting the dad into the life and then eventually letting the dad back into the life and it's just about her struggle and her journey of getting through that of a sick child and like putting on this face for your really young child because she's like by the end of the book she's still like three four years old it's this really sad like heartbreaking journey and and my dad didn't have the same type of disease but it was pretty similar in the sense that it was a blood disease and he also needed a transplant so in those ways that I could really empathize and like visualize Heather's Heather Harfim's situation and feel for her really so that book was also a pretty sad one but 
Gracie is so cute. Like they're a little cute, unconventional. Like in the way that they came to be was kind of unconventional, but it creates this like, um, because it's a memoir, you're really just on this journey with her for like a long time, but it's confined to like the 300 or so pages of the book, but it was really just really heartfelt and you really feel for her as a mother. My next book and last book is called um, Behold the Dreamers, which is a new book. So was um, Happiness, I believe. It was published this year or last year. Behold the Dreamers, ooh, I don't wanna botch the author's name, so I'm not gonna say it. Um, you'll see it in the clip, but this book was about a man, Jende, who is a Cameroonian immigrant, and he comes here on a visa, just as like a travel visa, but he comes to eventually like obtain citizenship, and there's a lot involved with his battle for getting a green card, or at least like a work visa or something. He eventually like gets his family to come over here, his wife, and his small little son Leo, Leone, and um, I feel like they called him Leo, ugh. Um, and so his wife was able to obtain a student visa because she was attending school to become a pharmacist and their son is basically illegal, he like doesn't have any papers or anything like that and Jende needs to find a job to be able to like provide for his family and so he becomes intertwined with this super big like financial guy he works at Lehman Brothers. And the time that this is taking place is the collapse of Lehman Brothers and like the fucking economy of the United States. And so it's kind of these two families, super upper class, like white family and this low class immigrant family and how their lives intertwine because of this event. And Jende works as the chauffeur for um, this banker. Fuck. Why do I always do this? I really just was so confident about talking about the book. I think his name, cool. ah, it's fine, Banker. Okay, he's not too important because the focus is Jende and his family. And so um, it's kind of like struggling to find a place in this world as an immigrant and it kind of like redefines the meaning of the American dream because you come to this country and you're like, wow, I can obtain a house. I could be somebody in this world, in this country when I could only, to for Jende, he was like totally poor. He didn't have any money. So there was no way that he could build himself up because he never had that kind of status. But in America, he had this thought that like, even if you are a low ass nobody you can build yourself up to be this great person who has money and like live the life and so he came with those expectations i really liked how it didn't have like the happiest happiest ending that you kind of expect for this kind of just him like being like the savior at the end who wins it all you know expecting what he got and it wasn't like that and i thought that was really great that it wasn't the conventional ending that you would expect and how it really redefined the american dream because i've never read anything like that my next two items are going to be beauty items. I have this Essie nail polish called Topless and Barefoot. Ha ha ha. I never would have bought this just because it's like this pale pink kind of nude. And it is just really appropriate for work for me. It's not too noticeable that it would like bother the customers or anything like that at work and it's also this professional sleek look that it's not too flashy but it also makes you look really put together so I've been wearing this like I've been just reapplying it the entire month and um that's what I've been using and loving. And my next one is actually the lip color that I'm wearing now. I've tried and been, um, it's from Revlon. It's the matte ultra H, it's the Revlon ultra HD matte lip color. Oh, it's 605 HD obsession. And I've been trying to find a matte lip gloss for a really long time or like lipstick or anything. And I went to Sephora to try some on, but I remember the moment that I put it on, it just dried up so quick and legit my lips looked like fucking mud cracks like that shit was so cracked up and it was also a struggle to take off like the milk makeup remover was not doing me any just like it was not helping me out i've been using this i've used it at work it's like it's a bold color but i don't use it all the time but this was um a lip color that was new and stood out to me that i've been using this month and it doesn't it does dry out but i mean i work like a six to seven or sometimes eight hour work day and it stayed on i didn't reapply i put on like chapstick and stuff to make my lips look 
you know, not cracked because my, like, your lips are gonna dry. They do need the rejuvenation like it happens with regular lipstick too. But it wasn't so often that it bothered me. It was probably, like, once that I needed to do that. So I was really impressed because my lips didn't also crack right away. But I also love this color, Obsession. So those are my two beauty products. And as usual, I'm going to end with music. Oh my god, you guys, Niall Horan was always my fucking favorite in One Direction. Like I told you, like I know that they're all creating their own music, but when I was talking to my sister about it, for us, Liam, Louie, and Zayn have created good, like, okay music to us. It's not something we would want to listen to all the time. And it's great, it's like really pop and what everybody wants to listen to now. But Harry and Niall have created something that you can enjoy right now and it eventually becomes like a classic when you're older. So there you go, okay? So Niall's album is definitely something that I've been listening to a long time on my Spotify for like this month. And a long time is like this month. If you don't know, his album is called Flickr and it has 13 songs on it. And I just wanna say like, I do have songs that I really like. Oh my god, like, his voice just makes me so happy, and he's so cute, like, oh my god, okay, his blue eyes, like, oh, girl, okay, first off, let's see, which songs have I been listening to the most, there's three songs that I really like, I'll just play a bit of them, the first one is called On the Loose, Okay, that's like really dancey. Um, it's a good walking song. Um, the next one is called Since We're Alone. Since we're alone. Yeah, you can show me your heart. If you put it all in my head, no, I swear, no, I won't break it apart. Yes. This song it's just it's so sweet I feel like you can dance to it at a wedding with like your loved one or like even your friends and be like I fucking love you like you're the special person in my heart and it's so sweet uh I feel like it's saying like you like it's just you and me you can be open and honest with me you know ah ah okay and this last one is called too much to ask also, it's in no particular order what I said that I liked. I do enjoy all of the songs on the album. These are just like my top three favorites. The shadows dance without you for the first time. My heart is open. You walk right in soon. I tell me there are things that you regret. Cause if for me and I just die in OV. This one is like kind of sad. It's I feel like a little bit of a breakup song, but he's kind of saying like, I still love you. Like, let me know, girl, because I'm still feeling for you. Ah, uh, this album is just so good. I know he's worked so hard on it and I'm so glad that it's finally out. But yes, those are all my favorites down below. Let me know any of your movie favorites as well. I would want to know in the comment section down below so if you guys enjoyed please give it a big thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel down below and i hope to see you guys in my video next week thanks for watching bye